I don't think, I genuinely don't think he was doing this to cause some kind of crisis. Um, but it's more symptomatic of the fact that the, the overall party is, as one of your um, contributors said, in an existential crisis. We've had Jamie Reid standing down um, in the last month. Again, a, a good opportunity coming his way. But let's be honest, if these politicians thought Labour had a very thrusting, vibrant future, I don't think they'd be sending the signals out to the outside world that they might be ready for an approach for another job. Does this feel to you like a sort of auto-deselection process? I mean, that was always the threat, wasn't it? That, that the people who didn't fit in with Corbyn's frame would find themselves deselected and they've just gone, I'm going to jump rather than quit. I'm going to jump I don't think it's as simple as an, as an auto kind of, I'm trying to preempt the deselection. I think the overall, there's a massive malaise in the PLP and that's obviously there's a lot of people that didn't support Corbyn. There was the failed coup. But they have rightly decided to just pipe down not have a go at Corbyn the whole time, but the party does feel depressed. It feels moribund. And it feels that way because it doesn't feel like we're a party that will be anywhere near Paris. And we used to have this feeling. In fact, when I worked for Ed Miliband, he said, look, we want to be a one-term opposition. Now it feels like, hey, we'll be a, possibly a, a, a five-term opposition. That's not a kind of a, a, a great message it's a to be. It's not a goal plan, it's, really, It, for your it is. And, and look, I, I do agree with Luke. I think I, I don't want to see any more MPs stepping down. I'm disappointed that these guys, because they're, they're real, they're very talented people, but I don't blame them at the same time. It is difficult. Rachel, does this make it easier for Jeremy Corbyn? He's quietly seeing the filtering out of everyone who disagrees with him without anyone seeming to create any problems for him. Is that good or bad for a leader? Well, I mean, first of all, I don't think it's great for the country to um, be facing another by-election at a time when we're, you know, trying to figure out how to leave the EU, when there's, there's an NHS crisis, when there's all kinds of things that this is now going to leak political and media attention away from. So for the country, it's not great. But it is true, I think, that uh, there are elements of the right in the Labour Party that are not fully embracing what, uh, you know, the sort of left populism that Corbyn is trying to present actually means. There seems to be this idea that, you know... So you think he's reached out to those on the right and they've just failed to take up the... Challenge. I'm saying I'm not saying that I'm saying that look there seems to be a misconception that left populism means be like Trump it doesn't mean that it means connect with people in a democratic in an accountable way do you speak think the Labour Party is connecting with to, people at the moment given the poll ratings speak to people's concerns speak to what they are on the street now sometimes uh, you're going to have a political and media establishment a part of it will be in your own party you're going to be facing that and the way to get your message to the people is to ambush, to change the message, to change the frame, to find a way See, to speak directly There is some to truth people. in that, And to Asia, some extent that the, works. The right of the party ran out of things I, to say, I, I, didn't I it? I agree. I, I've written about this. I mean, the reason Jeremy, Jeremy Corbyn is not to blame for the way the Labour Party became. He saw an opportunity in 2015 and he went for it. The other candidates, the moderate candidates, if you like, did not have a satisfactory vision. I guess, and and we would saw call them centrist rather Centrist or, or however you want to call them. And indeed, we didn't have a, a particularly compelling vision last year when there was another coup. So I completely accept that. And just as this wing of the so party So shouldn't they will embrace say, then the place that Labour is I in at the moment where, where it has elected Jeremy Corbyn not once but twice? Well, I think that for them it is a question of they have, they've accepted the fact that Jeremy has won again. They are letting Jeremy get on with being the leader. We all want Jeremy to do well. We want him to be the Prime Minister. He may well be onto a lot of things that people are keen about in the public, inequality, you know, Brexit. A big inequality was a big story, I think, in terms of Brexit. But we need him and his team to step up. It's not the PLP's fault Rachel, that Corbyn would you is not... That? He's you know, been left you know, to get on with the job and, and nobody knows doing a very you know, good we, job. We can, have, we can have the leadership election conversation again, but it seems like, you know, you're talking about competence and what I'm talking to you about is something much more fundamental that, I don't know, it's almost like the, part, the, the PLP doesn't have the eyes to see it. We're talking about shaking things up in a way... Rachel, we're, hang on, hang on, we're about talking about shaking things it's up in a way that is going to connect party with people. Winning that power. isn't about whether you think it's working, it's about whether people on the streets... Well, think it's well, working. We are going to have a big and the test fact of the matter is soon. that when he tried to do that on Tuesday, when he tried to talk about 
pay caps and the massive inequalities Nobody in wealth. Nobody knows what he tried to talk but about, Rachel. That's the point. They the didn't understand the message from him. So, so we can sit Rachel, here and talk Rachel, Rachel, about Rachel, how it's idiotic. Happy. We can sit here and talk about how it's lunatic. But the fact of the matter is we are talking about it. We're and not. People, and people in Peterborough Rachel, were saying, Rachel, Rachel, you know what, that's Rachel, a really Rachel, good idea. Rachel, there is massive, Rachel, the discussion there is massive Rachel, inequality Rachel, in the Rachel, country. Rachel, and this resonates. Rachel, there is no problem with the Labour Party talking about high pay. We want to do it. But do it properly. Get your policy thought sorted out, and, what I'm and don't be shambles. And hang on a minute, let me finish. Doing it properly uh, might not be let me the way that works. Let me let me finish. There is a big test coming up. We've got these two by-elections, and we all want Corbyn to do well. We want your leader and our leader, Jeremy Corbyn, to do well. He's now got to go out and talk to the public, listen to the public, and connect with the public. It's not about slagging off the PLP. It's not about internal warfare anymore. It's about getting the message out to the public. Okay. And we all Absolutely. want Jeremy to succeed. Do you think there is a clear message that he can get out? That's the question. I think that the issues that, you know, when you, when you listen to what Labour voters talk about, when you listen to what people who have been disenfranchised from Labour talk about, it's very much the issues that he's connecting with. It's wealth inequality, it's reinvestment in public infrastructure, it's nationalisation of the railways and utilities, it's support for the welfare state, it's support for the NHS, it's no dealing one is with fair taxation. Those. All nobody, those things are Rachel, things nobody that... is disagreeing with them. What we want, instead of, we all want I those things, I was have we the last don't word. want platitudes, yeah. we want <laughs> policies and we <laughs> want we'll somebody to win. I have the last word, but we are getting <laughs> on to the NHS now. Thank you very, very much indeed.